I'm waiting. I'm waiting for my flowers to bloom. <laughs> Hello there and welcome to my garden. Now, if you're a novice gardener like me, I would love it if you would consider subscribing to my channel. And perhaps if you're a gardener with more experience, you'd like to subscribe anyway and have a laugh and share your expertise with me in the comments. Now, you may remember if you watched last week's video that I got rid of lots of ragwort under our dark-leaved cherry tree. And that's revealed a great big mess so that's today's project, is to sort out some tubs I've discovered and also to cut back my native geranium in the hope that I'll have a second flush of colour before the winter. Right then, let's get going and see whether I can get out of this deck chair elegantly. <coughs> this is the situation under the dark leaf cherry tree. So we've got the native geranium here. I've got the berries, lords and ladies, they're green at the moment. It's the fruit from the Arum Pictum Italicum or Arum Italicum Pictum leaves, those marbled leaves that flower rangers love to use in the winter time. I've then got this plastic barrel, which originally was on our patio with goldfish on it many, many, many years ago. It's planted with um, an ericium, the perpetual wallflower. There's some lavender in there. What's the point of having lavender under the shade of the tree? So the idea is that I might plant out the ericium into the garden. Perhaps think about this tub for putting tulips in in the springtime, well, in the autumn for spring flowering, because I didn't have much success with the tulips that I planted in the garden cut back all of this and just tidy up things a little bit. Now this part of the garden is on the edge of the more formal part of the garden and you can see the ragwort behind which is the wildlife edges. So I would like to tidy up a bit but being respectful of the fact that my husband's side of the garden is the wildlife haven. I'm conscious that this might be a little bit of a messy job, so to protect the lawn and also to make it easier for me to dump stuff on the compost heap, I'm laying down a sheet. So I'm starting off by tackling the big plastic barrel and I'm finding things that are dead. I've got little pots of things with nothing growing but plant markers. So I am going to, first of all, weed the pot and then find out what I've got, which is still alive. Did you notice the lovely deck chair I was sitting in at the beginning of the video? Well, if you watch on to the end of the video, I'll show how I recovered that. So I was lucky enough to pick up the deck chair frames free of charge in a local sharing group in town. Well, that's the first job done. I have found myself a rather straggly plant of lavender. So I'm now going to ease the pot by rocking it to and fro out onto my plastic sheet so I can drag it somewhere else in the garden. But look what's underneath the hidey hole for loads of slugs and wood lice. I'm going to rehome the slugs using my trowel and an empty plant pot and then throw them into the wooded edge at the end of our garden as a little treat for the birds. Having moved the plastic barrel with the lavender in it you can see that I've revealed lots of other pots too and did you notice those two snails tucked up under the rim of one of them so having got that out of the way and cleared the space under the tree I'm now going to cut back the native geranium so I'm just taking handfuls of a time and using my secateurs dumping the rubbish on my ground sheets so I can drag that off to the compost heap later. My hope is that the geraniums will put on some more growth. And in fact, I've done this with some other geraniums nearer the house. And within a week, 10 days, they're putting on new leaf growth. Although I haven't yet seen any flower shoots develop. So we'll have to see whether I get new flowers before the end of the autumn or whether perhaps I'll have to wait again until springtime. 
let me know in the comments what you think is going to happen if I'm going to get flowers in the autumn, comment autumn and if you think I'm going to have to wait until the springtime, comment spring. I want to try and take off some of the ivy that's growing up the tree and also some of these sports, is that what they're called? When you've got some growth coming direct from the root of the tree and this has got green leaves rather than the dark leaf of the main canopy of the tree. On to the Erysium next. This gives really good all year round colour and I think this has flowered right the way through the year. So I'm going to deadhead it, trim off the sort of dead spiky bits and then plant it out into the garden and you'll see as I take it out of the pot how root bound it is. So first of all I've got to weed around the base of the plant and then I'm going to ruffle up the roots and encourage them once they've been planted in the ground to actually establish them in the ground so it can continue to grow but be hopefully be much more healthy. So once again I get out my gardening spade and if you've been watching my videos you know I do not enjoy digging. The ground here was really really dry so a combination of the garden spade, my trowel and then just getting on my hands and knees and scooping out the earth and eventually I was able to dig a hole deep enough to take the root. Conscious of the fact that the ground was really dry and of course we're in the summer months I really wanted to get this plant well and truly established so I've put probably all of my 10 litre of water from my watering can into the hole and then while I was teasing out the roots I was letting it soak down into the ground and then scooping back the soil that I had moved to create the hole and firming back in with my hands and also the heel of my foot and then the second 10 litre watering can full of water so I'm hopeful that, that 20 litres of water is going to give that plant a good start in life. Now that that job's done I'm going to plant out the lavender that I've rediscovered so shuffling that very heavy water barrel down into the garden and I've chosen this spot because it, it'll get more sunlight so once again hands and knees trying to dig a hole and as I dug down I was discovering more and more roots of the bindweed and the only way to keep on top of your bindweed is to keep digging it out and try and take out as much as the root as possible. All that work probably took me about an hour so once I'd finished the hard work I like to admire the rest of my garden. So this is the yarrow that I planted out a week or so ago. It suffered recently in the very hot weather so I'm having to go out every morning and give it a good old water. These are my nigella seeds. I planted these really late in the season towards the end of May. So finally they're coming into flower and I'm getting some seed heads starting to develop. Now I thought the dahlias on the left were never going to survive the slug damage but they seem to have put on some substantial growth and I'm starting to see some buds develop so fingers crossed I may well be able to pick dahlias in a few weeks time. I've got rosemary here and borage. The insects really love the borage. It's such a pretty flower. Well, not very, well, doesn't do very well in the vase because of its hairy stems. It seems to go quite pappy. These Rebecca are doing well, and also the phlox. Although I will say again, because of the very hot weather we've having recently, they're not looking quite as good now as they do in these video clips. And check out my lone zinnia. When my sister gave me the little plants she'd been nurturing from seed of the cosmos and the zinnia, I'd imagine I was going to have fields of flowers and it hasn't quite worked out like that. The cosmos looks as if it will be stunning in a week or so's time, but the zinnias have been very patchy in terms of yield. Now because I haven't been massively successful in growing my own flowers, I recently took the opportunity of going to a local garden for a tour and because they had a surplus of flowers in their kitchen garden they invited us to cut our own flowers so I'm going to pretend that the flowers I'm going to use for this little arrangement I'm going to walk you through on my own but it's given me some fabulous ideas of plants I should be looking out for next year. As you can see I'm using a pin holder to secure my flowers in place just topping up with water 
and then I'm not going to use all these flowers. I just filmed this segment before we went away for a few days and I thought if I make an arrangement using all these flowers they're just going to die. So what I don't use today I'm going to gift to a friend who happens to be looking after our dog for a few days. But what I am going to start with are these scarlet red lobelia. To be honest I would always have said I didn't particularly like these flowers but when you see the finished arrangement they look particularly striking so I'm going to start long and high and place my lobelia on the back edge of my pin holder and then I'm going to add the shorter flowers in working my way towards the front edge of the pin holder. As I started off with the red of lo the lobelia I'm going to think about using the red sweet williams. I rather like these sweet williams because they're a solid colour. Normally when you see them they come in a mixed pack and even if I'd had that red colour it would have been rimmed with a little bit of white around the edge of each flower. So having got the two spikes of lobelia at the top of the arrangement I'm then going to cut the sweet william to different lengths just to bring some of that scarlet, that intensity of the red down through the arrangement finishing off with quite a large head of the sweet william down at the bottom and that will give me a central line around which I can add in my other flowers. You'll probably see that the two sets of red flowers I've used are very dark and there's just a risk that they're going to recede and not show up when I've um, placed my flowers in my living room to enjoy. I had this in mind when I was cutting the flowers in the garden we visited and I decided to go for a contrasting colour. I've almost got some primary colours here with the red and yellow and I haven't actually got blue but there's certainly some purples. So I'm going to add in some of the flowers still as a contrast but before I do that I have managed to pick those two zinnias that I showed you earlier on in the video and I really want to showcase these my flowers are much shorter. Now the whole idea of me growing my own cut flowers is I wanted to grow long flowers so I could arrange them to enjoy indoors. But just look how short they are in relation to the flowers that I picked from the garden I visited. I really do need to investigate a little bit more how I get my flowers to put on a height or perhaps it's just a case of reading the seed packets more carefully so I can see how tall the resultant flowers will be. So keeping on with the length theme, this is something I have grown for my garden, the Verbena bonariasis. I know I'm not saying that right, I just cannot get the pronunciation right in my mind. So this flower is growing particularly tall, it waves around in the breeze. Now when we went to visit the garden, um, Langdon just outside Faversham the gardener there actually grew a shorter variety she said that she felt it was the normal variety was too tall and she'd managed to track down a variety which was a little bit shorter and therefore didn't wasn't quite so prone to toppling over and I haven't forgotten about the yellows it's the florist still in the bucket which I bought from the garden or cut from the garden we visited and in my hand I've got a piece of the yellow fennel which was a casualty in the garden so I'm setting that down low and I'm not going to use the florist still I'm going to put that in the bouquet for my friend. Instead I'm going to add another flash of yellow with my Rebecca and I think I've got another zinnia in that bucket too Again, look how short these flowers are. Now, when I checked the plant labels when I bought them, I'm sure it said that they had a spread of 40 centimetres and a height of 40 centimetres, but these can only be 20 centimetres in height. So perhaps I just have to wait for the plant to become established, whether they'll put on a little bit of extra growth and length as they bloom throughout the summer months, or perhaps it'll be something to look out for for next year. But I really don't want to have a garden full of short varieties. I want length, length, length. And here's my reward for all that digging and planting. Beautiful flower arrangement using about 15 stems. Now flowers over, let's get on with those deck chairs. 
I was kindly gifted these deck chairs, these vintage deck chairs, by a friend who'd advertised them on a local sharing site on Facebook. So as you can see, the original covers are faded and ripped. So I went online and bought myself some deck chair canvas. There was a really handy video showing how to replace the canvas on your deck chairs. And of course, like all things that look easy online, it wasn't quite so easy to do. The instructions on the video, which I'll link underneath this one, were really clear. But I found the problem was that I wasn't very skilled in hammering in the tacks to hold the canvas in place. But this is what you do if you want to recover a vintage deck chair. So you cut away your fabric. Each deck chair takes about one and a half meters of fabric. And I bought at the same time these upholstery, upholstery pins. Now, I think I bought a pack of 50 pins to do two deck chairs. Ideally, I would have bought more than that because I bent so many of them, I was having to discard them. So I have set the frame up on the table. It's upside down and you lift the, the mechanism up out of your way and then you roll the fabric underneath the top rail and then you tuck in the raw edge, hold it up to the rail and then start banging in your upholstery pins, starting at one end, then the other end and then the middle and then putting, I think probably I had 10 or 12 on each side, just fill in the gaps as evenly as you can. My husband suggested that I use this club hanger hammer to brace against when I was hammering in, but to be honest, I found it easier not to use it. I'd like to say my hammering skills improved as I went on, but totally randomly, I would get one of the pins in perfectly straight and then the next three would bend. And as you can see here, I've tried to set them out all in one line, but they were just going a little bit haywire. I have sat in the deck chair though, and it all has all held up. But um, I do think if I was to do this again, I would buy extra pins. And also if I ever come across any, I may well try and take out the ones I've put in and replace them just to make sure they are really firm and absolutely doing their job. And then when I've pinned the first section of fabric and fleece, I'm then measuring up here. So the scary thing again is I need to cut off the excess fabric. So I'm just finger creasing the fabric where I know I can cut and allow myself to tuck in the raw edge again and then repeat what I did on the other end of the chair. Gentle taps first and then getting firmer with my hammering. Fingers crossed this side will be better. And the moment of truth, setting the deck chair up and seeing whether it'll hold my weight. I've got a moment of panic here because I can't quite figure out how to put the chair up and I was worried that I had uh, attached the canvas in the wrong place. So um, I'm making a right palaver of it here. You'd think I'd never put up a deck chair before. But as you see, I've laid it all flat again and lifted it up and I can start breathing again. I did get it all the right way round. Hurrah! Now doesn't that deserve a round of applause in the comments? You can see the fabric I chose here were actually two different patterns with the similar colours. And while I was online buying the fabric, there was also an offer to get a set of matching headrests. So I decided to push your boat out. And I can say that these deck chairs have been an all round success. So when I finished the project of the 50 pins I used, I had one left in the heart-shaped bowl. And just look at all these ones that I bent. Thank you so much for joining me in the garden today. And let me know in the comments what you think is going to happen with my geraniums. I know they're probably going to put on leaf growth, but will I get another flush of flowers before the end of the year? That's all for me for now, and I'll see you again soon.